But, uh, I thought, you know, this, this is going to be relevant to all of us because no matter how young you are, no, no matter what stage of life you're in, we're all growing older, aren't we, by the day. And uh, I, I think I'm to the age now where I'm really starting to appreciate that a lot more. You know, when you're, you remember when you were in your teens, what, what was your attitude towards life back then? I'll never get that old. <laughs> old people get old. <laughs> I'm a young person. You know, you, we, we hear people talk about, uh, you know, teenagers, well, they think they're going to live forever. Well, you know, I think back to when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, I thought I had no concept of growing older and eventually passing away. And I saw my grandparents, you know, get old and, and um, and get infirm and, and, and pass away. And, uh, but even up into my 20s, you know, I, I, my attitude in my 20s was I've got my whole life ahead of me. You know, the, growing old, that's something way, way in the future. But what happens once you get through your 20s? The next thing you know, you're in your 50s or your 60s, and, and instead of looking forward to all those things that you plan to do, you're looking back on your life, you know, raising kids and, and all of that, working a job, uh, and it, you know, it just goes like that. But I, I thought this would, this is going to be relevant, I, I think, for everybody. But uh, Charles and, and uh, Dr. May were kind of teasing me a little bit before class. You know, they were they were saying, okay, we're we're going to do this study on growing older and wiser, and the the youngest guy, or maybe the second youngest, my wife's younger than I am, the second younger, youngest person in the class is, is teaching this class, so I'm, I don't know if I'm exactly qualified to get up here and lecture about this subject, but I, I feel like maybe I can lead a discussion, and that's one thing I, I want to do is, throughout the course of this study, is to, uh, for me to ask questions, and if you feel comfortable speaking up, I would love for you to do that because there's a lot of knowledge and wisdom in this room and I think we can learn from each other and I'm, I can certainly learn from y'all. Um, and, and Dr. May, he, he leaned over uh, during class and he said, I promise I'm not going to say anything, but <laughs> please say anything you want to because I, I think we can gain something from it. Okay, so growing older and wiser. Let me start off by asking a question. Think about, um, as Christians, what our attitude is towards aging and how that compares to our culture's attitude towards growing older. How do we, how do we look at growing older in the United States, in this culture? Do we have a favorable attitude towards aging? We don't, do we? Why would you say that? You just watch the TV commercial. <clears throat> That's exactly what I was thinking as I was putting this together. Um, I don't watch just a whole lot of TV, but the TV that I do watch is usually shows that are 40, 50, 60 years old. I like to watch, you know, Gunsmoke and the Andy Griffith Show. And those advertisers are smart because they can figure out by the types of shows you're watching kind of how old you are. And so, you know, Watching those old shows, all you see is advertisements for things like wrinkle cream and you know all of these. Uh, there's something called uh, fruits and veggies. Have you heard of that? The little capsule you take them once or twice a day. And Don't forget the pants. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not there yet, <laughs> but getting there. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, I hear this on the radio all the time. You take these little capsules and the testimonials that the people give are, I'm 84 years old and I take one of these once a day and now I feel like I did when I was 35. And so James is right. Our, our culture does not look favorably on growing older. And I would say that that is, this is just my observation. I'm 53 years old and I can think back to when I was a kid nine or ten years old and I felt like at that time that 
that we looked at older people more respectfully than we do now. We saw growing older as uh, a virtue. We, we, um, we thought about older people possessing this, these life experiences and wisdom that, that we could uh, draw from, from as younger people. But we, we don't really do that now. Our culture has become more obsessed with trying to hang on to our youth. And uh, along the lines of what James said about advertising, I was curious, you hear so much more about people having um, procedures to, to, to look young and, and feel younger, you know, the aesthetic treatments, surgical and non-surgical. I found a statistic from 2022, the amount of money that we spent in this country on both surgical and non-surgical procedures, uh, aesthetic procedures, you know, things like facelifts and tummy tucks and what have you. Would anybody like to venture a guess what that figure was in 2022? I think it's in the millions, higher. It's close to $12 billion that was spent in one year on people trying to hang on to their youth. Uh, and, and I think we've deceived ourselves in, in our culture. Our culture has deceived us into believing that, that we should fight the aging process. And I'm not talking about trying to stay healthy, you know, eating healthy, exercising, and trying to, to, to be healthy as we grow older, but this idea of, I don't want to look my age, I want to look 20 years younger than I actually am. And I think we're fooling ourselves. We, we have gotten to the point where we fail to see the, the privilege and the honor in, in growing older. So how do we define wisdom? Does anybody have a definition, or maybe a word or two that, that you think about when, when you think about wisdom? Experience and knowledge, and was there one other? Acquired. Acquired experience and knowledge. Yes. Yes. I think that's what most of us think about as you grow older. You're supposed to be growing wiser because you have more life experiences. Um, you've had more opportunities to, to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes and, and to use better judgment. Let me give you a couple of dictionary definitions of the word wisdom. Uh, and this pretty much aligns with what Sue just said. Uh, one is the, the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Uh, the other one I found says that wisdom is the ability to think and act utilizing knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. So let me ask you this. Is wisdom, does wisdom come automatically as we grow older? Is it just something that, that we're going to have? I see people shaking their heads. No. Because we've all probably known older people who continue to make the same mistakes. I, I, you don't know this person, but I'm thinking of one person in particular who's uh, in his 60s. And he's old enough to know better than, than to do certain things because they're detrimental to his health. And he keeps doing those things. He doesn't exercise good judgment. So just because we grow older does not necessarily mean that we attain wisdom, that, that we learn from those life experiences that, uh, that we're privileged to have. What we want to do in this class, I think, is, is think about wisdom in terms of godly wisdom, divine wisdom, and, and frame it in that context. And if, if you want to turn over to the book of Proverbs, and you probably don't have to because I'm sure everybody in this class is probably very familiar with this, this passage. But when I think about wisdom, divine wisdom, godly wisdom, 
My mind goes to the first chapter of Proverbs, verses 1 through 7, where, um, where the writer introduces his purpose for writing Proverbs. I told, I told Preston one time, but we, we were doing a, a little devo at home on Sunday nights, and we were, we were going through the, the book of Proverbs, and I told Preston, I said, you know, if, if all you did was, was to follow the teachings in this one book, if, if all the people in the world would just, regardless of their belief, follow the teachings in the book of Proverbs, everything would be wonderful. Um, it's a book full of wisdom. But I'm going to read um, verses 1 through 7. The Proverbs, Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance for understanding pro proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the fools despise wisdom and instruction. And verse 7 is, is the one that I try to keep rolling over in my head all the time, and, and I don't always succeed in doing that. But, you know, when we think about divine wisdom, I don't think that's a, as much a product of life experience. Yes, we, we uh, can benefit from leading a long life and, and having the benefit of having all of those experiences and, and learning from them. And uh, like I said before, making mistakes, learning from those, and then um, you know, changing course. But I don't think that, that wisdom is, is divine wisdom and godly wisdom is just about having life experiences. It's about being obedient to God and disciplining ourselves to the point that we yield to God's will in, in every one of life's circumstances. And so I, I think you know we might look at, at wisdom as a, as a reward for being obedient to God and, and being disciplined. What time does this class end? I went one minute over, so <laughs> we'll stop there. But if you do want to read ahead next year, uh, next next week. We will uh, jump into this head first. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be using James chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 8, and verse 12 kind of is the, uh, the main text for next week. And we will be talking about uh, how we gain wisdom through uh, difficult situations, through perseverance. We all know that the book of James, a big part of that is, is um, talking about how we benefit from trials and, and perseverance. So we will stop there and we'll jump right in next week. Thank you all.